Hey everybody, Mr. Odom here, and I'm going to cover section 10.3, experimental and theoretical probability. You'll need your, your goodies, right? You need your pencil, composition book, notebook, paper, and a calculator. The learning target for this video looks long and scary, um, but I'll summarize it for you. Basically, you have to be able to calculate experimental probabilities and theoretical probabilities and be able to compare the two. All right, um, so let's get started. So let's talk about experiments first. So when you conduct an experiment, the relative frequency of an event is the fraction or percent of the time that the event occurs. So think about you're flipping a coin. You flip a coin 15 times. How many times does that coin land on heads, right? And if you're conducting an experiment, if I'm doing it and you're doing it, we may get different answers. And if we were in class right now, we would actually do this experiment. Everyone would do it. Flip a, flip a little coin 20 times, see how many times you get heads, see how many times you get tail, tails, and you'll find that not everybody gets the same answer, okay? So for the formula for this, so we don't have to write this out, relative frequency, which really is the same as saying our experimental probability, um, I use the FO, we still call those, what's in the numerator, the favorable outcomes. And then in the denominator, instead of using the PO, the possible outcomes, I use the TO, which is the total number of times that you conduct the experiment. So the FO over the TO, all right? So you don't need to worry about that definition, but you do need to worry about this one, experimental probability. So our probability that is based on repeated trials of an experiment is called experimental probability. And again, we want if we want to find the probability of some event, like I flip a coin and the number of times I play heads, or you and I play rock, paper, scissors, and I want to know what's the probability that I win uh, when we play uh, 25 times, okay? Um, that would be, we would be calculating the experimental probability. And we would, again, use the FO over the TO, all right? So the video is going to stop here. I want you to Take a moment and write this definition down for experimental probability. The video is going to stop now. Okay, so we're back. You have that in your composition book. And there's a lot of examples in this uh, lesson, so uh, let's just go through them. So here we have a bar graph, and it's showing that we rolled a, uh, a six-sided dice or a number cube 50 times. And the bar graph shows the results. Uh, 10 times we landed on one, four times for two, eight times for three, 11 times for four and five, and six times for six, okay? We want to know what's the experimental probability of rolling an odd number. So this is our favorable outcome, rolling an odd number. So I highlighted the one, the three, and the five, and we could figure out What's the total number of favorable outcomes by adding those totals together? What I got for a one, how many did I get for an eight? How many times did it land on five? And I add those together and I get 29. So that goes in the numerator. The total number of outcomes is the total number of times that we rolled this dice, which was 50. And so 29 over 50, that's in simplest form. I can also turn that into a percent and I get 58%. So when we rolled this number cube 50 times, um, it was a 58% chance. In our experiment, the experimental probability, 58% chance of getting an odd number, just in this experiment. Okay, let's look at another example. <clears throat> so example two. So it rains two out of the last 12 days in March. If this trend continues, how many days would you expect it to rain in April? Okay, 
So how many rainy days would you expect in April? So I just kind of made this probability of rainy days, and that's going to be my foe over the toe, um, with the foe being that it rained, okay? Here's a probability that is already given to us. The probability of rainy days in March, specifically the last 12 days, well, how many days did it rain? It rained twice. So two out of those last 12 days, which you can turn into a, um, I'm sorry, which you can put into simplest form, okay? So that means that uh, for every six days, it rains one time. And we can use that probability to say, well, in April, if the trend continues, that we think it's going to rain once out of every six days. All right? So we need to know how many days are in April, which that's the picture of the calendar. We can see there's 30 days. So that 30 represents the PO. Those are the number of days or not the PO, sorry, the toe. That is the number of days, total number of days. And how many of those days would we expect it to rain? Well, I made my friendly old little proportion right here, and I solved it and got an answer of five. So that means if the trend continues, then every six days it'll rain once, and so out of 30 days, it'll rain five days, okay? So let's move on. So there's a couple of practice problems for you. And I want you to work out these practice problems. So in example one, what's the probability of rolling an even number, okay? What's the probability of rolling an even number? Actually, I'm not going to stop the video. We're actually going to work these out. I was gonna stop the video and have you work them out, but um, we're gonna work these out together. So here we go. So for the first one, problem one, the experimental, ex experimental, experimental probabil probab blah, 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 probability of rolling an even number, well, I highlighted the even numbers. So you roll the two, that happened four times. You roll the four, that happened 11 times. Or you roll the six, that happened six times. So I add those together to get the foe. And then the total number of times you rolled the dice was 50. So then you can go ahead and do the calculation and you get about 42% of the time you rolled an even number. And if we wanted to compare that, so 42% was even, we come back up here, 58% was odd. So 58% plus 42% is actually 100%. So that means out of those 50 rolls, 42% of the time it was even. 58% of the time it was odd in that experiment, just in the experiment. All right, let's look at number two. So at a clothing company, an inspector finds five defective pairs of jeans in a shipment of 200. So we could probably find a probability, an experimental probability that um, out of that shipment of 200 pairs of jeans, the probability that there is a defective pair. Okay, so we're going to do that. So we do that down here. The probability that the genes were defective was there was five defective genes out of 200 and we can create this probability, which is one over 40. So one out of every 40 pair was defective. And then the question says, well, what uh, if, this, if the trend continues? So if we still get one pair out of every 40 that's defective, how many pairs of genes would we expect to be defective if we had 5,000 pair? So again, I set up my handy dandy Proportion multiplied both sides by 5,000. I use a multiplication property of equality and I get X equals 125, which means there was 125. We could expect 125 defective pairs of genes out of the 5,000. 
Okay, so that's experimental probability. Theoretical probability is something that we have already been calculating in, in the section on probability, section 10.2. All right, so when all the possible outcomes are equally likely, here's the definition, the theoretical probability of an event is the ratio of the foe to the number of possible outcomes or the PO. So this is what we were doing in section um, 10.2. We were actually calculating the theoretical probabilities. So in theory, when you flip a coin, there's two sides. In theory, the probability you would get ahead would be one out of two or 50%. The probability that you would get tails would also be one out of two, which is 50%. When you add those percentages together, you should get 100, and you do, all right? So let's practice using um, the th or finding a theoretical probability. So you randomly choose one of these letters. What's the theoretical probability of choosing a vowel? Well, how many vowels are here? Right, I have the E, I have the O, and I have this other E. That was not good colors to use. Why did I do that? Let's use better color totem. Here we go. I have the E, I have the O, and I have this other E. So that are so that there are actually three vowels, which would represent my favorable outcomes, out of a total of seven letters. So it would be three out of seven which is approximately 43%. So let's look at this example here. So there's a bobblehead, not a Mr. Odom bobblehead, but it's fine. So the theoretical probability of winning one of these bobbleheads when spinning a prize wheel is one out of six, okay? The wheel has three bobblehead sections. You want to know how many sections are on the wheel. Okay, so the probability that you win would be one out of six. So if there were six sections total, one of them would be a bobblehead section. That's how you can get one sixth. So I made a proportion again making that proportion. And I want to figure out, well, instead of one bobblehead out of six total sections, how many bobblehead sections would I need? Or I'm sorry, if I had three bobblehead sections, then how many total sections would be on the wheel? So I made this proportion and it's pretty easy to figure out that there has to be 18 sections, okay? Because one sixth equals three eighteenths, all right? So that's how you can figure out um, how many sections there are. Cool. So we're gonna practice. So for these, I am going to stop the video and I do want you to work these problems out in your composition book. And if you get stuck, try something. Don't leave it blank. So for problem three, I put the letters here. So you got your E, your X, your P, your L, your O, your R, your E. So you should be able to do that one. For problem number five, okay, I put the probability of winning. All right, you need to know um, how many bobbleheads you would win if you spun the wheel 540 times. So think about that is what does that 540 represent? Okay. Um, so go ahead, uh, stop the video. If you're watching Ed Puzzle, the video will stop now. Okay, so we're back. And you can see for problem number three, probability of choosing an X. Well, there's only one X out of the seven. So it's one out of seven or about 14.3%. So that's the <clears throat> likelihood that you would choose an X, not very likely. The probability of spinning an odd number on a spinner is this, 0 0.6. The spinner has 10 sections. How many sections have odd numbers? So all I did was take the 0 0.6 
And I remember that I could write that as six tenths. And I remember probability is the foe over, so here would be my foe over my po. Okay. Um, so now that I know that, I know that um, out of 10 sections, six of them would have to be odd. That's how I would get my 0 0.6, okay? And then for number five, um, the probability of winning was 1 sixth. And I spin the wheel. So if I spin the wheel six times, I would win one bobblehead. That's kind of what it's, that's what the theory tells me. If I spin it 540 times, how many bobbleheads do you think I would win? So I had to multiply both sides by 90, because that's how I can go from 6 to 540. So that tells me that if I spun the wheel 540 times, I should win 90 of those bobbleheads. Okay, so that's how that problem works. For number five, we're almost done here. Um, the bar graph shows the results of rolling a number cube 300 times. Or the, remember the other problem, we rolled it 50. So this time we're rolling it a lot more. All right. So let's find that experimental probability. So I calculated it. I basically added up what I highlighted down here. I chose all the <clears throat> um, odd numbered rolls and I added them together put that over 300 because we rolled the dice 300 times and I got 49%. All right. So let's, let's analyze this a little bit. So how does the experimental probability compare with the theoretical probability? Well, the theoretical probability that if I rolled a six sided dice, that I would get an odd number. Well, I could roll a one, a three or a five. So the foe would be three and the PO would be six. So I would get 50%. That's my theoretical probability. My experimental probability above was 49%. Notice that we rolled the, the dice a lot. We rolled it 300 times, okay? So let's compare um, the experimental probability, and I wrote experimental, and that should be, uh, I wrote theoretical, and this should also be experimental. So this is experimental probability, the one we calculated back in example one. It was 42%. So look what's happening here. Uh, in example one, we rolled the dice 50 times. In example, I'm sorry, <clears throat> in part A of the problem above, we rolled the dice 300 times. So basically, um, the experimental probability gets really close to the theory the more times you do it, okay? If you flip a coin a thousand times, the chance, there's, there's a very small chance that it would land on heads a thousand times. It would probably land on heads very close to 500 times. And you can do that experiment and see what you get. All right, so we want to use the bar graph again um, in example five. It's right here um, to find the experimental probability of rolling a number greater than one. So I don't care about the one. I care about the two, the three, the four, the five, and the six. So I have to add all those together. And I calculate my experimental probability, which is 84%. And then I can go and calculate my theoretical probability of rolling something greater than one. So I roll the dice. There are six choices. Five of them are greater than one. So that's my favorable, those are my favorable outcomes. And so I can calculate the theoretical probability and notice how close they are together. All right. Does that always happen? If you roll a number cube 300 times that you would always be that close? Maybe. Maybe not, depends on the experiment, depends on the results of your experiment, I should say. So that was a long video, I understand. Um, it's, it's theoretical and experimental probability, something you need to understand. 
So apologize for the length of the video. So I'm getting out. See you guys later.